I came this morning to the beautiful Loch Morlick. Beautiful, but very, very windy. I'm hoping it will get better, but I think it's just getting worse. Anyway, while I wait, I just wanted to talk about something that I think we should be, we as photographers, should be thinking a little bit more often than I think we do. And it's about who we are creating for. When I'm here and I'm looking for images, who am I creating those images for, other than for myself, of course. In other words, when you share your work, be it online or offline, who do you have in mind? What's your audience? From my own experience, most of the people who come to... So windy. Most people paying attention to our photos, to our images, can be divided in two groups. The people who are interested in the art and they just look at the images because they like it, and other fellow photographers. Of course, there's a lot of overlapping in between them. The thing is that the latter group, the fellow photographers group, is a much larger one. Just take a look at this screenshot with the most watched videos on my YouTube channel. As you can see, all of them, the top 10, are about camera gear or videos that are directed to other photographers about composition or something like that. I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there have had the same experience. And this is just to be expected, by the way, because photography is a very accessible medium, it's a very accessible art form. Almost anyone with a phone is a photographer today, right? So people want to know how to make good images, how they can do the things that other people are doing. They want to learn. And that is very, very good. Now, and this is where it gets tricky, in my opinion, this could be a very slippery slope. And I'm going to try to explain why. Making a living with photography today is very, very hard. And one of the reasons is because, as I said, everyone is a photographer today, and now with the race of AI, it's only gonna get worse and, and harder. We are oversaturated with a seemingly unlimited and endless stream of amazing images every day. It is very hard to stand out because we are living in the golden age of photography. And I, I really believe that. I think it's it's become very accessible and it's become very easy to for anyone to create what they envision. And I think that is an amazing thing, by the way. But because we have so many people trying to create amazing stuff every day, we have a huge supply. And we don't have that many people consuming that content, not that many people waiting for those images to be made, to look at them and pay for them in some way. There's a huge filter in which only a few selected photographers make it through. So even though it's possible to make it as a photographer who only makes photos and nothing else, the more realistic approach for most of us out there is probably to teach how to make photos because you reach there is a much much bigger demand for that kind of content than the art itself i guess my point and going back to the numbers of my youtube channel there are more people interested in knowing about a 20 30 year old film medium format film camera than people interested in seeing what i was able to make with it what's a photographer to do in this environment then you can push your art and try to make it through that big filter. Or you can take another approach and talk about camera gear, about techniques, about settings, about post-processing, and focus on all the photographers that are coming behind you and teach them. Or, of course, because nothing in life is black and white, you can do both. I'm not trying to shame anyone. I think that expertise is very valuable. And I think it's amazing that we have so much educational content out there for free for anyone to watch and learn and become better photographers. That is an amazing thing. I'm very happy. I I used many of those resources myself years ago to, to learn photography and to learn the basics and how to, to make the images that I'm making today. So that is an amazing thing. I'm not here to criticize that or to shame on anyone for, for doing it. This is a cautionary tale, though, because I've seen way too many photographers who were doing amazing work, very talented photographers, and they shifted gears and now they all but stopped creating, uh, taking photos with their cameras and they just talk about, they just 
teach others how to do it. And based on the results that they are getting, who can blame them? They are doing much better today, for sure. I just fear that others see that success and they try to follow the same route and they forget why they started taking pictures in the first place. Again, I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do, just to be careful and know more or less where is that you want to go, what success is for you, because the definition of success for you will be, should be very different from other person's definition of uh, success. And to be careful, because I've had this happen to me before when I switched from film to uh, digital from color to black and white once you start digging a hole it's very hard to stop so if we create for other photographers exclusively that's the audience we are gonna get and that is what they are gonna expect from you so if you want to shift in the future to okay I don't want to talk about my camera anymore I don't want to focus on this technique or the other one I just want to focus on my art that audience might not be as receptive as receptive as you think they will be. Another example I just thought of is uh, photo books. I'm yet to pick up a book by a very successful photographer in the past or the present, I don't know, Ansel Adams or Kudelka or uh, Sebastian Salgado or Michael Kenna. When you open that book, you'll notice that they don't mention at all, like cameras or camera settings or lenses or anything like that they are talking about their subject how that made them feel or the story behind what's happening in the photograph in the image but they rarely rarely talk about the camera the lens or the settings and that is because their audience is not was not other photographers it was the general public because they wanted to tell a story and I think this is a very important thing to keep in mind when we are creating funny enough this is not the case with photographers who are still developing their style their vision their message what what is that they are trying to say with their photography because they will happily share the camera the lens and the settings the film stock that they used and that tells me that in their mind their target audience is other photographers and again that is totally fine if that's what you want to do if that's the people you want to reach go for it but I think it could be very useful and very valuable for all of us to just every once in a while stop and ask ourselves that question just take a couple minutes to think who am I creating for when I'm here who am I creating this image for when I'm stepping in this lake with my wellies and taking a long exposure. What do I want to create here and why? And let that inform your work, I guess. Anyway, just a thought I wanted to share this morning. I'm going to get out of the car now and try to make an image in this very windy environment. Please feel free to share your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.